Chief Strategies Founder and Managing Partner, as well as a CNBC a contributor. What is it? It's four weeks in a row. I guess, is that the Dow and the S and P, and the best week since December? And this was even after uh, we're thinking higher for longer, and maybe even uh, maybe even a you know. Some people say no, but I, I think a cut or a, a hike could be in the car. It's not a zero percent chance, Katie. So what 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 happened momentum wise? Well, there is short term upside momentum on the back of the pullback, right? So we saw about a six percent downdraft for the S and P five hundred, and now a six percent or so rebound. And that puts us back to square one. So the market now is at a proving ground in terms of short term resistance. For the S&P 500, the level is about 5260, and we are looking for one more downdraft before we see new highs logged. We could see maybe a brief new high, but we're looking for that this rally to fail and give way to one more downdraft before the corrective phase ends. So we're seeing that sometimes corrections unfold in this ABC fashion, and we see the April wave as the A wave, this current wave as the B wave, and we're still awaiting the C wave. And we say that because the intermediate term momentum is still to the downside, even though we've had this very strong bounce. And I think, Joe, what you're alluding to is that sentiment could actually be getting a little bit complacent. Some measures show it, others don't. We're watching the VIX in particular because the VIX is really quite oversold, as you can imagine right now, and very, very close to strong support on the chart and no resistance until about 21. And we've seen momentum behind the VIX, which is sort of a, an EKG for the market in a way. We've seen momentum shift to the degree that we could be getting into a more highly volatile, vol volatile environment going forward. So who's calling the shots right now, the, the generals or, or the troops? Has, has there been enough of a broadening to where, uh, you know, we don't need to, to watch Apple every day or... or uh, I don't know, any of the Magnificent Seven. It's still them, isn't it? You know, I, I went back and looked at the year-to-date winners on the sector front just today, and we have communication services up there, even utilities, energy, and then technology. So it's mm. not been all about the mega cap complex this time around. We do have good breath behind the market, and that's something that does support the bull cycle beyond this corrective phase that we're anticipating. We do think that yields are really the driving force here yet again. With 10-year yields, they look poised to bounce, and that could instill that next down move for the S&P 500. But we'll be primed and ready to buy into that weakness. We're just waiting for those intermediate term metrics. These are things for the technicians out there, like the weekly MACD indicator, the weekly stochastic oscillator. We want those things to look better before we can feel confident adding back to take advantage of that stronger breath. You don't do, you can't chart CPI or core CPI, can you? It would be so slow moving. It, it wouldn't be probably the most really worthwhile that. exercise. That's what, that's what will inform the next move in rates, probably. So if we, you, you think yields look like they're ready to rally. In other words, bonds look like they could sell off more. That could bring the next, what, B wave, you called it, for, for the S&P. <laughs> C wave, so, right. What, what is that at 480? What does it indicate on it? What's the terminal uh, uh, yield on the 10 year it indicates? Uh, you know, just we, we expect a fleeting bounce for yield. So, and certainly the PPI data could instill that, right? Just a brief knee jerk reaction higher. And that's when we'd actually be adding fixed income exposure because we have in 10 year yields still that loss of long term upside momentum. So we've been calling for a lower high, of course, versus 5%. We don't think we're going to see 5% again this year, but we're not terribly convinced that that lower high is already in place. So we want to see this last sort of ditch effort from yields, and that should get us to maybe a place of better capitulation for equities. So like for, not 480, like what, in the 460 where, where we just were, 465? Yeah, I, I don't have conviction as to where it could go because, honestly, there's no strong resistance for yields between here and 5%. 5% seems way too aggressive, uh, 4, 8 maybe, um, but there's no real resistance between here and there. Is gold, gold has stalled out at this point? 
It is stalled, uh, but that's okay. It really hasn't impacted the intermediate term momentum metrics terribly much. And we have uptrends in place across really the metals complex, and these follow long-term breakouts, so long-term trading range breakouts for gold, for silver. So we actually are really um, on board with uh, having that exposure and even more broadly commodity exposure in general because we believe that we've gotten into this more uh, sort of broad commodity bull cycle with turnarounds yeah. unfolding in agricultural commodities. We have even signs of life in nat gas, which has been, of course, a downtrending commodity for, for a, a long, go. long time here. I, I know. I just want to ask. So 60 looks like a pretty, on Bitcoin, 60 looks like a, like it's becoming a pretty uh, significant support level. It, it, it keeps testing it. And then it's bounced back again today up uh, almost 2%. I think we can trust that Bitcoin and other altcoins can see one more downdraft alongside equities, that they'll have sort of a, an in-step, um, maybe not terribly correlated, but at the yeah. same time showing that risk on is still um, you know, going to suffer during the next downdraft. Okay. So for Bitcoin, we think there is downside risk into the low 50s, and low 50s. that's where we're more interested yeah. to have exposure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Or, yeah, she's looking for a little bit of a pullback in the S&P. Which with Bitcoin correlates to like 52, which is, uh, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Okay. All right, Katie. Thank you. Of course.